few tips to help you relax. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I hope you really had a chance to sit with the lick that I broke down on last week. If you haven't checked it out, please go back and check that video out. Some good stuff and you're missing out on it. Today I want to talk to you about something or rather kind of give you some ideas that can help you along the way with your practicing. Let me say this before I even get into this subject. Most of the things that I come share with you guys are some things that I've probably dealt with on a personal level or I know someone who's dealt with the same thing. More than likely, 90% of the time, it's stuff that I've dealt with on a personal level. So it's things that affected me in my plan and I found a way around it or I'm learning a way around it to better help me to get through my plan, get through my practice time, uh, even better serve you when I'm giving you ideas of things to practice on. Now, one of the things I noticed in my playing is that at certain points in my playing, when I get around certain people or when I get around people in general, it's like I would have brain freeze. I couldn't remember anything. I could sit there and practice and play and come up with all kind of stuff when it's just me in a room by myself and just play some off the wall crazy stuff. But on the other hand, when I would get in front of a group of people, I would completely go blank and couldn't think of one thing to play. So if that's ever happened to you, let me know in the comment section below. Don't let me feel like I'm out here by myself. If that ever happened to you, definitely comment and let me know. Yeah, that's me. So I got something I feel like that will help you guys that may deal with that or still fighting and dealing with that from time to time. One thing I seen this, I was scrolling through my Instagram feed and I seen this drummer, well-known drummer, and he made a statement that I've heard years ago, but you know how you hear things and sometimes you actually forget them. He made this statement, it was so simple, but yet so profound to me. He made a simple statement that says, play as if no one's watching. Light bulbs went off and just flashing everywhere because I'm like, that's it, it's that simple. A lot of times we put extra stress on ourselves. I know me in particular, we could put a lot of extra stress on ourselves because we immediately shut down and there's this performance mode we go into. And when we start thinking about, don't make mistakes, don't make mistakes, don't make mistakes, what's gonna happen? You're gonna make a mistake. You're gonna do something wrong. It's like your first impression that you're trying to make with someone and, and in the back of your mind it's like, don't say anything crazy, don't say nothing stupid. So you got this thing happening. It's the same thing when we're playing. It's like we got this thing, we wanna give our best. And so that anxiety that comes with that sometimes causes us to freeze up and it causes the creative juices to stop flowing because now there's this anxiety on I have to produce, I have to produce. So most of the time what we revert back to is our muscle memory. And a lot of the new ideas that we create or we spend in our practice time just flowing with, they're not there. You've reverted back to muscle memory, which means you're just going through the motion. And if you haven't perfected your muscle memory stuff, a lot of times you'll lose your train of thought because you're not thinking, you're just thinking, let me not mess up. Let me not mess up and trying to remember the last lick that you played or the last line or something cool that you did. Now you have no clue. So a thing that you can do is remember, play as if no one else is watching. I'm a band director, so in, in situations, I find myself a lot of times comfortable playing in front of a lot of people because I know at those times when I'm leading the band, I'm not focused as much on what I'm doing, even though I know what I'm doing, I'm very aware of everything that I'm playing, but I'm more focused on the entire band and what the keyboard player is doing, what the drummer is doing, what the guitar player is doing, the organ player, and so on, whoever's in the band. When I'm focused on them, 
I'm not focused as much on what I'm doing. So the anxiety for me leaves because it's not all this attention. I don't have this microscope going on my base while I'm trying to play. It's like the focus is elsewhere. So I'm taking my attention off of my instrument. And so that's the second thing that you could do. Try not to focus all of your attention on yourself and your instrument. Focus on other things in the room. Try to, I mean, even if you, <laughs> even if you start to get distracted with seeing something that's on the floor that shouldn't be, anything that helps to take your attention and that anxiety off. Now, the thing about that, now let me add this before we go too far in. The thing about that is make sure that you do know the music and you have practiced the music well, but also try not to focus so much on playing everything right that you actually become a stumbling block for your own self. You want to make sure that you take some of that energy and some of that anxiety off of yourself by worrying about everything and just pay attention to what's going on in the room. You might find something funny that's happening in the room and it loosens you up. And when you loosen up, when you laugh, you loosen up. Or even when you tap into another emotional thing, just like for you musicians who may um, play in church. And it doesn't have to just be church, but church is the one of the easier ones to pull on as far as from an emotional standpoint because a lot of things happen at church and you can be caught up in the emotion of the song and that kind of thing and or the, you know the spirit of the song and so you're taken away by that and you're not focusing so much on what you're doing you're aware but you're not completely concentrating on everything you're doing here so it, it takes a lot of the stress off of what you're doing here and you notice you can play more freely now it's the same thing and most of the time when these things happen it, it happens under the grounds of improvisation so we start focusing on everything we want to play but if you could take your mind off of that now that leads me to my third point that I want to make if you could take your mind off of that one of the good ways to do that is by simply turning on something when you practice not every time we have those dedicated practice times that we want to spend and we want to really isolate and see everything we're doing, listening to the tone and all this kind of stuff. But sometimes it's good to just pull out your bass or your instrument and turn the TV on or turn YouTube on or turn the computer on. Uh, let your social media or something go, not so you can be distracted, but so you can actually just sit there. Sometimes I'll pull up um, something on my phone and I'll just have it. You know, I'll just have it just going, and I'm just... It don't have to make sense. It's just really just kind of getting my fingers to going and loosening my hands up. And I'm aware, again, of what I'm playing. I'm practicing new ideas, but my focus is not completely on what I'm playing. I'm checking out what's going on over here. Now, with my mind, I'm learning how to multitask with my mind because I'm checking out, okay, whatever the video, whatever it is I'm interested in. I'm a, I'm a history kind of guy. I like history and I like cars. So I might pull up a video on like a, a car conversion or some type of history thing and I'm watching it and I'm playing at the same time, but my focus is not completely on what I'm playing. Even though I'm working on it, I'm working on speed, I'm working on all these different things, but it's not so intense to where I'm getting frustrated. It's like a no brainer, like I'm just sitting here watching something. <laughs> And sometimes the stuff will be in time. All the time, it doesn't have to be in time. It doesn't have to be a groove. It's just really getting your fingers used to that muscle memory of moving around the fretboard instead of feeling like I gotta be locked into a song all the time. You know what I'm saying? So when we're doing that, we're locked into it. We're thinking about a groove and pocket and all this kind of stuff. A lot of times that's the main focus, but it's good sometimes to take your mind off of that and to just allow yourself to move around. It's almost like if you were an athlete, it's, there are a lot of exercises that you do that's simply for training purposes and getting you ready and getting you conditioned. But sometimes it's good to just jog. It's just good to build up that uh, durability endurance that kind of thing and just so you're conditioning your body you're conditioning your hands you're conditioning your mind to be able to tap into that thing whenever you need to and now that you've been playing and not putting so much emphasis on trying to do everything right it opens you up to be able to do more so hopefully these are some things that will help you to become more fluent in your playing to help you to relax and take so much emphasis off on trying to be this 
trying to be that and just enjoy this instrument and enjoy the journey of learning. I wanted to let you guys know I'm super excited. I just released my first book that you can actually pick up on Amazon right now called 10 Ways to Success the working musician. So it's available on Kindle and it's available as a paperback as well. I encourage you to become a member of the monthly membership lessons if you haven't done that already. And also check out some of my courses. I have some really, really cool courses that I think that'll be very helpful for you if you are a bass player that's trying to grow. Even if you're trying to grow in entrepreneurship, one of the things in this book that I talk about is being resourceful. I also have a course called Be Productive and Multiply where I kind of go through some of those steps of some of the things that I learned to help you be more resourceful so you can start to grow not only as a bass player but as an overall entrepreneur musician so you're not just always waiting on the next gig because given our current climate eh, you know the gigs are kind of iffy right now so I want to give you a way to kind of take your career into your own hands so you can start creating some resources for yourself on your own so be sure to grab a copy of that book and also be sure to go ahead and start that course as well be productive and multiply anyway guys thank you so much for hanging with me today i will see you guys on next week i'm out peace